We're here with Lance Romero for a third episode. And hopefully final. Part three of Flight Tales. Flight Tales. Woo. Woo. So we left off at, I think uh, it was the Cancun trip, and you were working for Envoy, and you ended up coming to visit while in Cancun, and it was a adventure. So anyway, you stayed over there. How long were you at an Envoy? Uh, just almost two years. Two I years. didn't quite meet my contractual agreement. It wasn't for me. Didn't yeah. have fun. Wasn't enjoying life. Uh. So I ended up going to Wheels Up, and I loved it there. I think I stayed there just at three years. Uh, what kind I, of airplanes did they have? King Air. King I was. Air. Uh, they have a lot of different airplanes right now. But what uh, is Wheels Up? Wheels Up is a charter company. It's kind of like NetJets, really, huh? Like trying to be like NetJets? Yeah, not really. No, because there was no ownership, huh? There's no ownership. It's a membership. At Wheels Up. So we operated, let's see. Like a to, monthly fee? To, to simply put this in very broad terms, we operated a lot like Uber. We had an app for our end user. Uh, they got on the app and said where they were, where they wanted to go, and what time they wanted to leave. And the airplane just showed up. I mean, there's a, a, quite a bit more to it, but it, it Yes. Yeah, I did that for three years. I was assigned the King Air. We had a bunch of different jet models along with the King Air, but the King Air was the most popular. And where all pilots started. All pilots started with the King Air? Yeah, at Wheels oh, okay. Up. They all got hired into the King Air. And then and as they, they were allowed to do better. E- right, better. As, <laughs> as they built seniority, I guess, uh, they were offered different positions if they wanted it. And that's really where I learned a lot. I learned a lot at Envoy as far as procedures and and how to operate as a professional pilot. When I got to Wheels Up and started flying there, I really learned what it took to be a professional pilot as far as planning, responsibilities, passenger care. Everything kind of came full circle for me there. And I'm grateful for that opportunity because I learned so much. And in those three years, I, I got to fly to almost every corner of the country. You went over international? So. Yeah, we did quite a bit of international. Uh, yeah, that poor King Air flew some surprising places. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm... How's, met, do you, how's Wheels Up now? Ooh. They're uh, they, they kind of struggling, huh? It's different Yeah, from what it was when I was there. It's I don't think it's the same company. They're still operational. They're still doing their thing. It's just not what it was. Yeah. Uh, I'm grateful. Didn't Delta buy them? They were always... Or was going to buy them? Or... Yeah, they were always a part of Wheels Up in one capacity or another, but they've now... They're now a very big part of them. Yeah. I don't know the exact inner workings of it, but they're heavily involved now, which I think is a good thing for them if they're going to continue to be successful. Uh, they needed a little more direction. I met a lot of cool people, learned a lot of really fun stuff. I think they'll be okay. Then after you left uh, Wheels Up, where'd you go? I'm now flying for a uh, medical company, flying a Challenger 350. Uh, very small operation, just servicing the uh, executives there. Yeah. It's quite a different pace. At Wheels Up, we were doing five, six, seven legs a day, serving many, many different people. I think I can count on maybe one hand how many times I had a repeat passenger Yeah, at Wheels Up. We had so many different members. Uh, Here now, I fly the same one or two people every time, which is really nice. You get to know the person, what they like, what they don't like, how to stock the plane for them properly. You'll pretty much go to the same spots too, right? For the most part, they they throw a curveball in there every now and then. But yeah, when I started my career, I my goal was kind of to end up in a position like this. Never really was interested in airline. I did it because you know, something every pilot should try at some point, I guess. But ultimately, I wanted to do corporate and I've pretty much got the dream job now. How long have you been there? Since 2022? Yes. 2022. So I spent the COVID times at Wills Up 
Oh, yeah, I bet it was it were y'all flying much? We initially no. They're like we slow down cuz everyone yeah, had no idea what was going on, so didn't know that they could go anywhere. <laughs> right. So we slowed down tremendously initially. Yeah, they reduced our schedules to so they wouldn't have to lay off. I think we went from normal was 8 and 6. We went to 13 and 15 or something like that. Oh man. That the time off was awesome. Yeah, that's <laughs> a lot of time at home. <laughs> and we were so slow that whenever we would go on, we normally weren't getting dispatched right away. We'd stay at home for a couple extra days, five, six extra days, then they'd dispatch us when they actually needed us. But then it turned into we exploded. Oh, yeah, everybody got tired of being <clears throat> cooped up. And- well, not only that, but the airlines, all their new regulations, mask and that you know they reduced their flights that all the people that had to travel that were traveling first class and uh, what's the other one business class yeah that they, they made the stretch to start flying wheels up to get a more private private flights and stuff get more private flights and more and gar- not have to deal with masks and get more guarantee of yeah. actually getting where they were going yeah well that's still a problem with the airlines yeah, they never really recovered from that. No. People complain all the time about getting uh, canceled flights and delayed and all that stuff. With that new schedule, gave me the availability to do new things. That's whenever you were in the midst of moving. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's where we're going with that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, moving to Lafayette. Yeah, your your original flight school was in New Iberia. Yeah. And uh, you decided to find a new home here in Lafayette. Yeah. Yeah, Me we the, had to do all the work of uh, painting. and. Yeah, we, we got to do uh, all the drywall and painting yeah. and make this place home. This is a hidden room. We didn't actually do this room. No, no, the, the, the uh, maintenance guys kept spying on us to That's figure right. out what we were doing and copied us. We need to put a picture back there. Maybe somebody who listens to the podcast will send us something. <laughs> That's questionable. <laughs> Have you seen? We were just talking about the internet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they should comment what we should put back there. <laughs> what a weird time. I know. <laughs> I, I'd say a Christmas tree. Yeah. So we worked on our place here. Yeah. You got to learn how to do drywall yes. and, and trim work and yeah. painting. And the walls and- weren't straight and we had to, yeah, trim the. Well, so in <laughs> my office, it? there was two vents and one was actually an air conditioned vent and the other one was a uh, hidden. Looked like a vent. It was a non-working vent. Non-working vent. Yeah, that's how you say it. Oh, I remember. And so, it. Yeah, y'all yeah. And about so that. we moved the vent, and it was just an open, like a hidden space. They were definitely hiding something in there. Yeah. Who knows? Did we ever find the breaker <laughs> that turns off? No, we the- haven't found the breaker. That <laughs> there was some plugs in this other room that we don't know where the breaker is. We've tried all the breaker <laughs> box that we can find in the whole hangar. Actually, not maybe not all the way at the other end of the hangar, but on this side of the hangar, and nothing turns off these outlets, and so we don't know where the breaker. So is. who's paying for those that electric? You just plug everything in this building <laughs> yes. into those. <laughs> well, the crazy thing is, we've like electrocuted ourselves on there. Yeah, we've- your dad came to help us. I remember whenever <laughs> we we were doing this, and we were trying to put up drywall, and it took us a while because. We were goofing off a little bit. We were working hard. Not yeah, really, well, no. we weren't professionals like your dad. Let's say that. We weren't professionals like your dad. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so so he would come in and just yell at us and then throw up a whole room of dry ro- drywall. Hey, we had a and, solid like and, half a wall done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he would get you know upset at us. And then so later on when we were trying to do the outlets – um, he got electrocuted. I know the one in the front office, we thought 
we got the breaker because all the lights were out. <laughs> and then your dad went in there to change the outlet, and that was a completely different circuit. Yeah. And so he shocked himself. He's, Whoa, this one is not out. Y'all didn't check him before y'all did uh, anything with Well, it? he's the yeah, one. Yeah, he did. He, he definitely checked, checked it. And he <laughs> stuck his finger in there. Whatever, screwdriver. <laughs> Nope, it's yes. oh, this one's not out. <laughs> <laughs> he checked it. That was our adventure of remodeling this <laughs> office. Yeah. Yeah. Professionals. Why didn't y'all do this room? Uh, well, because well, originally I didn't rent these rooms. So, like, uh, but the airport saw what we were doing in the room, the area I rented. And so they wanted to copy it. And I guess they had a plan because they're like, oh, he'll take these rooms eventually. And he did. And uh, yeah. Got him. Yep. <laughs> Got me. Yeah, well, that's we, what we I could... did with all my free time during COVID, though. Yes. Yeah, I had some free time, too, because we didn't go anywhere. That's when I was flying the Piaggio. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. still flying the Piaggio. And, well, nobody was going anywhere because of, of COVID. <laughs> we didn't know what we could do. Well, the crazy part is whenever he told me that he, he rented this place, I was like, oh, cool. Yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. So I I think I literally showed up over here with a five gallon bucket of primer and a five gallon bucket of sheetrock mud. Yeah, we were gonna mud the whole <laughs> thing, but it was paneling. It was And we were just gonna mud over the paneling yeah. to make it smooth. Uh, we found all these holes in the wall that had like There were so many holes. Uh like holes, holes? Computer holes. Co- yeah, but there was like <laughs> computer computer plugs. Coming out the walls, like uh, wh- whoever. Bundles of wire. Yeah, wire, phone jacks, and all kinds of stuff. Good we were tonight. looking at it. We were like, this is not going to be good. Like, this is not going to look nice if we just mud over it. And How are we going to fix these big holes? Sheet rock. Sheet rock. So <laughs> sheet then I ordered a bunch of sheet rock. I think it, it was, turned out okay, you know? It was I mean, fun. Yeah. Works a lot, but it, it sounds, was fun. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds like y'all had fun, but your dad... No, no, we constantly got chewed out. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> He'd come in the afternoons just to check on us, and yeah. we, we had gotten nothing done. We had pizza, and, <laughs> and we nice had chest. some folding ch- <laughs> yeah, nice chests and the folding chairs, and yeah, we got a piece of sheetrock up over there, and, and it's just leaning us. against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. pretty much. And he would just yell at us, and then he'd put up the whole room. <laughs> While yelling at y'all, yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah, that is so accurate. <laughs> but you know, like with any remodel, it got to a point where it was just like, oh, I'm just so ready to be done with this. You know, after we got yelled at and most of the work done, <laughs> <laughs> turned into <laughs> Hector. will fix it. Yeah, <laughs> it was How- Caesar or Hector? Oh, Caesar, Caesar. Caesar. Yeah. See, any hole we mess up or screw we put in the wrong spot, Caesar would fix it. Caesar was the sheetrock. Just uh, come he, up behind y'all and yeah, he was like the guy who would who would uh, float. Oh, that float poor the guy sheetrock. walked around here for two days shaking his head. <laughs> yeah, just he would have done less work had he done it yes. all himself. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. How long did it take y'all, or how long did it take them? <laughs> hey, us. Yeah, you were well, right you know, the first when time. did I? Let's see. I think I signed the lease in March, and then. We were we were done around in June, and then February June. the next year. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were done by June. I think we just said it was it's June. good enough. Let's yeah. open up. Yeah, it turned into we're gonna we're doing this right. Yeah, no half at. I forget what our slogan was uh, the whole time. Yeah. And then towards the end, it was like ah, it's good enough. It's yeah, it's good enough. Let's get it done. Let's just open up. It's good enough. So, yeah, that was a good adventure during COVID. I mean, it gave us something to do. Yeah. We didn't have anything else to do. And then after that, you got your job in the Challenger. Yeah, I did. And that was in 22. So, COVID had kind of gone away for the most part. Yeah. And uh, everyone was traveling like normal again. So, we started crisscrossing the country in a fancy jet. Yeah. That was some fun training. Going from the King Air to the... Yeah, yeah. Challenger. Everything happened so much faster. Was, was it a challenge? It was not. <laughs> <laughs> challenger. <laughs> I feel like we just went off the rails here. We kind of did. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I'll you, it you, you <laughs> said you're going to stay where you're at, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to fly anything different or just stay with the Challenger? I'm perfectly happy. In Do the you think life. they'll get another plane? I don't know. What advice would you give new people coming into aviation? Now, 
since you've completed your journey? My advice to a new pilot or an aspiring pilot is to do your research and try to accomplish your training as responsibly and cheap as possible. There is no gold star for... Oh, trying to get through it fast and... Well, not get through it fast. The faster you get through it, the cheaper it is. But, yeah. You know, you have all these <laughs> academies and and four-year colleges offering fl- flight programs. When you get out of these places, you have so much debt. I see it as a possibility of being crippling to a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Where if you choose a more responsible, financially responsible route, you get to the same destination. I mean, the card looks the same. All when you the get same. those licenses, they all look the same as the, <clears throat> nobody asks, well, where'd you go? And I'm not saying, you know, college is dumb or don't go to college, but there's a more responsible way to get a degree than finding an aviation college. Yeah. Hanging out here and talking to people that I've worked with and meeting people on the road. I, I've learned that, that the four year aviation degree, it might have in the past been financially responsible, but it's gotten stupidly expensive. Yeah. I mean, I, what most airlines aren't requiring a uh, degree right now. I think FedEx is the only one that still says, uh, what is it? Four-year degree preferred. Yeah, so everyone that's not even is, a requirement. That's yeah, just everyone like, else has completely dropped it. Yeah. I can see a degree being beneficial if you're wanting to move through the system and you know ultimately end up in a management position, or leadership position at the company you're going to be at. But nowadays for line pilots, it's not a requirement. Yeah. Obviously, it looks better and you feel more accomplished and I'll give that to you. Actually, who knows what the industry is going to do, you know, what they're going to, where they're going to go. And right. It, it always has its ups and downs. Yeah. And at, at some point they might require you to have a degree, but right in, at this moment, it's a good way to, uh, sort out the resumes whenever times get tight. Yeah. I was thinking more of what people in your field, like, what would you give advice for someone who wants to do what you do? What would you say? I mean, the more social you are, more in the aviation you are, that's how you get those jobs, you know. I mean, like your job. Yeah, being a corporate pilot. You had to pilot, know people. Yeah, exactly. So being so, a corporate pilot is very unique, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's not all a, who you know kind of deal, but it's also you. if you're not out doing anything, nobody's going to know you. Right. You have to be very social, very approachable. Yeah. He got his carpet job because he trained the owner of the plane. Yeah, yeah. I taught, I taught uh, the owner. Oh, of the yes. That's why I said it's like all about who you know. You got to yeah. be standing at the right coffee pot at the right time in the right location. Yep. But it's not like so. Like what Ryan was saying, it's not like just always be at Target asking people <laughs> if they like to fly. Like, yeah. <laughs> No, you have to be in this aviation circle, you know. You and what does that look up. like? I mean, going to the FBO, working at the FBO if you could, you know, being there and, and meeting people. I mean, I started the school and then I ended up training the guy that bought the Piaggio. When he bought the Piaggio, I had been working at Acadian also. So if I didn't have that experience, he wouldn't have wanted me to fly the Piaggio. So it was it was a combination of the two where I was working uh i taught him how to fly and then i had the experience flying the king airs and the lear and stuff and i ended up flying for him in his smaller plane because i knew ryan right yeah and we and ryan of, didn't want to do some of the jobs so <laughs> right, he was like right. oh, i know a guy <laughs> i know a guy he i know somebody some who's very gullible <laughs> <laughs> well and you know i mean we have like i try to get everybody over here so you know like lance here and people that have done stuff you know that you know been flying different stuff mixing with the new students and the instructors i got you so there's some kind of conversation you, going you on. try you know? to create a culture yeah a, a welcoming environment for people to come and and hang out and mingle and that's that's really where all of your connections are made yeah it could be at your flight school depending on what kind of flight school you're at and the fbo is just you know, you got people coming and going all the time. So if you're there 
if the FBO doesn't throw you out, <laughs> then, you know, you can meet people. But also, if you got a job there, you're also meeting the pilots and the owners of the planes and all that kind of stuff. So if you tell them, like, I'm working on my commercial, you know, maybe they'll give you a chance. You know, or maybe, or you, you know, you're working on your CFI and then they might want you to instruct them or whatever, you know. There's nothing I'm else to talk about, kinda really. Like, I'm kind of out of stuff. That's really it. Trying to think of something else to ask. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of <laughs> out of, uh, kind of out of stuff. Yeah. Flight tales. If you made it this far, you listened to the entire episode. And for that, we would just like to say thank you, and we hope you enjoyed it. We would also like to thank Lance for sharing part of his story with us. If you have any questions about today's episode or suggestions for future episodes, just leave a comment or message us, and we'll do our best to answer. If you'd like to check out some fun aviation videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Owens Flight Training. Or if you'd like to get more information on becoming a safe, knowledgeable, and confident pilot, just head over to our website, owensflighttraining.com. 